Welcome back, Universe to Off the Rails Podcast, episode 78, our first ever 78th episode. Yeah, Woo! Yeah. Season. Coming to you live from the Cobalt Banker Home Sale Realty Studios here in Chile, but very fall and beautiful, beautiful Grafton, Grafton, Wisconsin. And if you're looking to buy or sell a home, maybe interested in a career in real estate, maybe you want to move to beautiful Grafton. Give Roy, Roy a call, Roy at CBHSR.com, or give him a call, 414-235-0763. They'd love to be your go-to for all your real estate needs. And I realize I say call and call back to back, and it's just memorized that way, so I'm never going to change. But this <laughs> week, we're back in the studio. We're finally getting back on track from all our big comedy events. And all the way from San Diego, he's a comedian, a writer, a radio personality on Keeping It Weird. Never trust a man with two first names. Rick Jean! <laughs> How's it going over there, Rick? Yeah, it's going well. Thanks all for right. having me on. Yep, we saw Rick at the World Series of Comedy. We actually caught his show. So uh, let me entertain you. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> let me entertain you. Would you like a bad joke monologue? Yes. yes. Give it to us. Yes. Him. All right, Lebanon is hit with a huge power outage, expected to last a week or more. So until the lights come back on, they'll be known as Lebanon. (laughs) 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 Oh, we'll see how this one goes. Okay, I wrote this one last night and Molly laughed. Uh, Superman's son comes out of the closet this month in the episode. Uh... He will now be taken over as Superman. I didn't know he had a son. What's his name? Sup- Bruce. <laughs> Superman's son. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know. It's um, been in the news. Where have, have you been? I haven't kept up. I didn't know he had a son. I don't know how a Kryptonian can have sex with humans. Just we can get into that debate. Too much power. You probably how right. could Lois Lane take that? Um the density of Superman, she's got to be on top. I would imagine so. Yeah. Okay. Marijuana smokers are the new target of being blamed for breakthrough cases. What? But that's just like their opinion, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Washington University creates segregated housing to explore and celebrate diversity. What? Did Mortimer and Randolph Duke bet a dollar that they could get segregation back and make people <laughs> celebrate it? <laughs> Half of that's for me. <laughs> wow. Okay, segregation's back. People love it. All right. <laughs> William Shatner became the oldest person in space. Yes. Woo-hoo! Yeah. And uh, he already forgot he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't waste the guy. money. I lo- 90 years old. I hope he lives a long time. Was it a three Five minute ride for <laughs> green bananas there, Kevin? But the, well, how, how perfect would that have been if he would have just blown up? I mean, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> no, what? I, 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 I want him to live a long time, but I'm just saying, Captain Kirk blows up in his spaceship. What a beautiful death that would be. At night, beautiful. I think it would be really funny if he actually did forget it, and people are like, How was space? and he's like, It was a damn TV show. I was never <laughs> <laughs> get it through your head. <laughs> like, no, you were just in space. it's a fucking TV show, you idiot. <laughs> the Starship Enterprise, dude, that's good. <laughs> uh, the FDA now says taking daily aspirin to prevent heart attacks is a bad thing. What? What? Like, wait, the FDA just can't like change its mind on stuff, can it? <laughs> <laughs> when you're looking at your arm, <laughs> that's true. Like, they have they've been kind of sketchy, haven't they? Yeah. Oh no, now it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh, thought it was baby aspirin, though. It's, any it's aspirin. bad for your stomach. Aspirin's bad. They for your said stomach. it's uh, individually. Everybody's a snowflake. It's good for some, bad for some. Rick, do you take it every day? An aspirin every day? No, I take a lot of uh, blood thinners and other stuff, though. Oh, boy. That's why yeah. I can't take aspirin. Oh, I see. Because, uh, right. yeah. Go ahead. So if a vampire bites your thin blood, does he get it like just bursting down his throat like a beer bong? Yeah, I hope so. 
<laughs> and he gets some medication with it, you know. Yeah. And, and it's low calorie. A little, a little chalky. <laughs> Would blood thinner be harmful to a vampire? Hmm. I'll probably go right through him. You get the runs. Yeah, you would get the runs. <laughs> I'm shitting blood for days. What has happened to the monologue? We're off the rails already. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Robert Durst is sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his best friend. And he said he did it all for the nookie. Oh, boy. Oh, that. <laughs> Wrong guy. Fred Durst. Wrong guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A new study shows women who suffer concussions were 76% less likely to get pregnant, which means cavemen were fucking geniuses. Oh! <laughs> it's a wonder why we're here. <laughs> Man, is there condom? dark today? Nope, but I got one of these. <laughs> <Whammo>! <laughs> Al Capone's belongings are being sold for $3 million at auction. Hmm. And don't forget to pay the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, the dollar is falling, but North Korea's currency has soared by 25%. Hmm. And 9 out of 10 North Co Korean economists say this is a good thing. Wait. Nine out of nine. <laughs> All right. And finally, Dr. Fauci said, go out and enjoy Halloween this year. And half of the country says, no, fuck you. <laughs> I don't want to shit Halloween. We're going to have candy corn, circus peanuts all day. We're going to let some Harry Potter bank teller tell me how to celebrate listen Halloween. the once i saw him throw a baseball i'm like i'm not listening to anything that guy yeah. that's it <laughs> i don't know why he allowed himself to go out and throw out that first pitch have you ever seen it the i saw the first pitch ever. but did you hear his excuse what he said he was whipping him down the middle the day before so fast that he blew his arm out <laughs> oh okay all right if you say so hit it mal let's get this rolling <laughs> All right, welcome hey. back. Wow, you guys switched. <laughs> yeah, we got a little bit of moving around. It's, it's just right across. It's weird. The road. <laughs> I know. We like to mess with people and just uh, here, we'll do that too. Move around. There we go. So we got in the studio today, we got the radio personality on Keeping It Weird. He's a comedian, a writer. Fifteen. Hey. <laughs> I normally write two intros, and if you couldn't tell, I wrote one and forgot to write the second intro when we come back. Sorry about that, Rick. I'll do better next time, but you know what you get right now? What I get now? It's the hot seat! Oh. <laughs> Woo! It's the <laughs> yep, that's what you get. That's a great production. Nice. Do you tip a drone delivery? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, that's Rick's question. I yeah. That. No. Blurred. Why not? It's a drone. Yeah, who are you tipping? The guy's got to load the drone. And but he's not it. there. He's, he's the... still piloting it. He's got the little joystick. Is he right outside my house with the radio shack thing? You no, I mean... the driver? No. Well, that's Amazon, man. But they're bringing like food and stuff. Nah, no, no. No, I got it right here. Here's one. Uh, they brought sushi all over the place. Oh, you mean and food? ice cream? Yeah. No. Drones yeah. deliver sushi and ice cream above Tel Aviv. How? Oh, wow. You throw down a little "I want ice cream" map, and they drop it right there. Now, do you slip it a fiver? Listen, I don't think sushi okay. and ice cream are kosher. Okay. So that's not happening. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I wouldn't give the drone cash, but maybe, you know, if I pay on my credit card in advance, they round up or something, you know? There you go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you may need a little oil here and there. You know, yeah, get a little oil for yourself. So are they completely automated? Do they just have like a... They just know where you're... Them? I think you have to have the the stand, like this little square pad, and then it knows where your square pad is, and it just goes... Well, there's nothing in the way because it's flying, so it can just, as the crow flies, get to you. <laughs> okay. There are other drones in the way. Yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah, then people gonna be robbing the drone. Yeah. <laughs> I want the ice cream and the sushi. I just I don't know how I feel about drones. Period. I don't, I don't, either. I don't like it. Isn't there gonna be some sort of problem with them? They're gonna mess up something, killing bees. Yeah. All right, we got. Uh, if you were a shapeshifter, what body would you inhabit the most? Would you be yourself, or would you look like something else? I would be myself most of the time, and I would okay. only sh 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 shift shapes as necessary, you know? Shift shapes. That's a tough <laughs> what do you mean? Like you lock your keys out and you ship shape to a piece of paper? And... Yeah, I mean, it depends I what, I, you know, what, what as, as, as required, you know, depending on what I want. <laughs> you know? well, it probably doesn't take as much energy then. To, it probably takes energy to maintain it if you wanted to maintain being someone other than yourself. What do you mean That's energy? Point. So you're focusing like you can only be drain your energy bar. I mean, if you when could you hold shape your shift, breath, I would think that you would have to focus on what you're changed into. It would take a lot out of you, probably. So I'm you couldn't saying. shape shift to Jennifer Lawrence for me. You'd have to hold your breath the whole time, or I, I don't. Well, she probably couldn't be Jennifer Lawrence, like you know, 24 hours a day. You know, she'll probably run out. You'd glitch out if you're like coughing or sneezing, right? Because that. And then with Jennifer your... Lawrence, I, I don't have know. to turn into Molly while she's. <laughs> <laughs> the same. That's a big question. Yeah, she's out doing a movie, and can't then be all of a sudden there's Molly, right? <laughs> oh, that's, that's a great one. <laughs> we'll let her in. <laughs> they just switch bodies once in a while. <laughs> that could be awkward. Okay. <laughs> um, hey, I would shave shift to Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Yeah, and I would be a lot closer. I would, I, would, I would play with myself quite a bit. I don't know <laughs> if Will turned into Jennifer Lawrence, could I? But it'd still be my voice. <laughs> yeah, it'd still sound like Will. <laughs> it'd still Matthews. be my voice. No way. <laughs> You'd have to put a gag on me. Andrew Matthews says Will is the man. I choke you must, more than normal. He must not know you too well. <laughs> Would you shape shift into Jennifer Lawrence? Oh, definitely. I'd be hovering over a mirror all day and <laughs> <laughs> like Jennifer Lawrence. Molly, how would you like that? Mm? I walk in her when Come she's on, over a mirror. What if he turned into Jennifer Lawrence? Would y'all have a little romance? Huh? No? Oh, yes. Come Jennifer on, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. She's built like the predator, Molly. Come you would on, have romance Molly, with her if romance? she wanted it. Have a little kissy, with Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> you guys are terrible. I just you guys are terrible people. Just, I'm just trying to find out more about you, Molly. Yeah, that's what we're all here for. You're not going to find anything out. <laughs> she's very, she's very mysterious. Maybe she mysterious should be in the hot seat. Producer. <laughs> it's getting pretty warm over there, I think. <laughs> when is it acceptable to put Christmas stuff in stores? I think after Thanksgiving, but I'm in the minority. Me too. No, nope, you're with me. Thanksgiving should get its whole thing. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I after Thanksgiving, I agree. 100%. But now they're ripping off Halloween and Christmas stuff's already yeah, up. Ridiculous. Christmas yeah, they push this stuff out before the Halloween stuff. It's, it's nuts. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. But I think some people are just lazy, never take it down. Just keep it up. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm talking yeah, about stores. stores. Like the, the stores yeah. have all their Christmas they're stuff already everything. out. Right next to the Halloween stuff. And the Halloween stuff is Halloween stuff from the prior year. And the early Christmas stuff is shit that they didn't sell last year. Nah. I, I bought Halloween candy that was old, like, like oh, this is from last year. I, I always do that with Valentine's Day candy. 
Oh, man. Wait, you buy me Valentine's candy? No, I buy the old stuff for myself. <laughs> and it comes on 90% off the next you day. You don't bring any home to your lady? It never no. makes it to her. You'll see right yeah, after together in 12 years, he doesn't buy her candy. Well, he don't want her to get plumped. No, I got to keep it down. We just realized that today is Sweetest Day on the way over here, only because there was a sign up somewhere about. Did you get her something for Sweetest Day? No. No. We don't oh, do. Man. We no. don't do that. We don't even do Christmas. We do birthdays. We're going to a pumpkin farm for Sweetest Day. Oh, yeah. I got to put up with Charlie Brown tonight. I think I love Charlie Brown. Yeah, that was my idea. All right. If you get a sex robot, is that con <laughs> considered cheating? It depends how many sex robots you have. <laughs> oh, like cheating with one on the other sex robot. Yeah. I mean, I'm single, so I could have a sex robot. I'm not cheating on anybody. But if I okay. have two sex robots... Then my sex robots may have a you know they may have a problem with each other. Ooh, oh, what about all three? I see robots staring each other down. Oh yeah, man. yeah. sex Don't robots start that. fighting each other, and then they just both team up against you. Nope. We <laughs> there's that guy from Kazakhstan. He's had those issues with yeah, his he old, has. old wife, and he's married a was, sex robot, and then he got a girlfriend. Oh, yeah, the bodybuilder. The bodybuilder guy. But no, there was he, a guy in Japan who had his sex robot hacked, and it crushed him to death in a hug, in a bear hug. Oh, wow. Somebody hacked it and said, crush. Huh. Wow. And then there was that ransom for the, the ball squeezing got hacked. You remember that? Oh, yeah. The guy wanted one Bitcoin. There's some sort of, like, torture device that you can have your partner have, like, remote control and how much it squeezes your sack. But Jesus. some hacker, you lost me in squeezing your sack. Some <laughs> hacker hacked into it and demanded a bitcoin to let go, like <laughs> cranked it up oh. to 10 and wanted a bit. Sure, that wasn't a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> it sounds, sounds like. like it. That's what you deserve, man. You want to do some shit like that? Have your balls squeezed? That's the chance you take. And I guess that's what makes it so that, hot. Yeah, that's like <laughs> <laughs> you could crush my balls to death until they pop. Ugh. <laughs> No, I'm not putting myself in that. That's situation. why Glory Hill's made a comeback, man. It's the danger. <laughs> you don't know what's on the other side. <laughs> Could be a giant scissors. <laughs> Big blade. Oh. Men. Especially if you hear a lot of bar before him. <laughs> yeah, oh, somebody yes. with a bear trap. Just oh, board. Jesus. Oh. A bear trap? Oh. Or it could be a dude's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky now. <laughs> We're ladies' mouth. Oh, that's what you're open for. You could, you could lie to yourself. Snake eyes don't no, come up laughing. It was a lady. Hey, hey, guys. <laughs> hey, Molly's bringing us back. <laughs> we were off the rails for a moment. Okay. This is a weird question. Um, how would being able to breathe underwater change your life? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll take more baths. I don't know. It probably wouldn't. I, I really, uh, um, I don't go in the water very much. But could you I live make... in San Diego, you think I would. I could know. You, yeah. you could so. you use it to make money somehow? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It's just something I never thought about breathing underwater. What am I going to do? Fight crime? <laughs> you could look for like treasure well, the, in the ocean. The shipwrecks and stuff. Oh, they, they oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I guess I could just explore, walk around down there. Explore all the shipwrecks. Just start walking on the bottom of the ocean. Do anyway, so like scuba gear. I don't know. I don't think it's going to, like, if I had a superpower, breathe underwater, be, like, way down at my bottom of choices. Yeah, but that's <laughs> yeah. the choice. If you could <laughs> yeah, breathe how underwater. Would you, what would you do with it? Huh. Well. Would you be able to withstand the pressure of being able to go down that deep? Because I would. Oh, I would definitely go oh, down. Yeah. I, I would want to go down stay, yeah, go to those down. depths where there's all the, the stuff that people haven't even discovered yet yeah, but you can't, can't like get down there. under the that's pressure. what i'm saying i said if it also let you withstand the pressure nope, that's what i would just want breathe underwater no, I just breathe underwater yeah well what's the point of being able to breathe underwater if you that's what i'm it? saying yeah, go down i think there. i would like to take a nap down there just just oh it'd be That'd nice be to see yeah. they say that drowning's like taking a big wet nap. yeah but there's all kinds of creepy crawlies that are going to come out of the mud when you're sleeping on the bottom of a oh, riverbed. Yeah. Sure. Just Shark's going to come you. nibble on you. Oh, well, you're going to have leeches all over Shark you. come cruising. Eyes, black <laughs> eyes, tall like a doll's eyes. Yeah, well, I would have to have some kind of thing around me to protect me. Shit, the hell with that. You just... Well, I would sleep in a pool. How is that? <laughs> yeah, pool would be good. <laughs> Impress people at pool parties. Look how long I can pull my breath. 
The pool just got struck by lightning. You could win <laughs> like, a lot of money by telling people I could stay down there for five minutes and then get all the people, you know, and collect the Come up the at money. like 503 and act out of breath? Like you just I made mean, it? Yeah. <laughs> I bet I could do six minutes and you just keep on taking their money. Yeah, double or nothing. <laughs> down there. You got a half-finished game of solitaire down there that you're working on. <laughs> oh, bored. Was it was it you that said that when you saw Jaws that you were afraid to even go in a pool? Yes. Yeah. My son was the same way because he thought something was gonna come out of the drain at him. Or like just the splashing just come out of the white something gonna get yeah. me. And like that. Is that why you don't like the water too much, Rick? Let's it, talk, let's go in there a little bit. Oh, the reason I don't go in the water is uh, um. My mom almost drowned when she was a kid. So growing up, I was never, she always had like a fear, like, go, don't go out there. So I never grew up like being allowed really in the water, you know? Can you And swim? I didn't live until I was 14. I didn't live anywhere where there was like natural water. We just had pools and it really wasn't accessible to me, you know? Can so you I really swim? didn't learn how to swim until I was like 14. Okay. Oh, you can swim All right. now. But you're and in so, California. Now, you know, I just don't like the ocean. You got the waves and the salt water. And, well, the thing That's is, it'd be like a pool. Is <laughs> I, know, but I don't like it. <laughs> but sometimes when you're in that kind of water and you step on something, it's like, oh, what the hell was that? Or even a weed or something. A weed or something. You. Yeah, you something. But, but I was in Lake Michigan a few years ago, and it was actually pretty nice. Yeah, that's our lake. Yeah, we yeah. know. I live right near Lake Michigan, actually. I was at the the southern tip of it, Indiana. Okay. Gross. I know. Well, <laughs> that's where all. That's the, where all the shit. All the shit piles <laughs> It goes all the way down right. into the South Bend. Yep. All of Milwaukee yeah. and Chicago's needles just floating <laughs> on down to Indiana. There you go. Have fun with those guys. No charge. All right. Is there anything you could eat 10 pounds of? Oh, there's lots of things I could eat 10 pounds of. What are you going for? Um, I don't know how much each one uh, it weighs, but a pizza. I could eat 10, 10 pounds of pizza gotta be the density i was thinking like like gold coins i could eat 10 nah, i'm thinking of something i want to eat i eat lots of pizza right. oh well like an atom of dark matter <laughs> that's 10 pounds <laughs> no i'm thinking just you know well, i was stack also up pizzas like, oh stack. what about boiled shrimp and then you peel them so you're really not eating 10 pounds but it's 10 no pounds you have to eat it. 10 pounds it doesn't count yeah when you're done yeah, peeling, once you peel them you lose the scale. weight yeah, you have to eat it. It has to be in your body. Pe 10, 10 pounds. pounds of peeled shrimp. No, I can't do that. That wouldn't be good. I, I could go for 10 pounds of you pizza. You eat like a bear. You'd just be scooping them in multiple at a time. <laughs> yeah, nah, I don't want that. I mean, let me tell you something about shrimp, though. I got okay. sick on some shrimp down in New Orleans. Some scrimp? Y'all got sick on the shrimp. I said shrimp. <laughs> I didn't say shrimp. Um, I got sick on it, and it was the worst, man. I couldn't eat shrimp for like, I don't know, four or five years. Hmm. What kind of pizza you like? You got good pizza in San Diego? Well, San Diego's not exactly known for pizza. That's they more have California like pizza, it. right? Where they just have tomato slices instead of sauce. No, I mean they have that. You can get pizza. You can get all. There's so many transplants here that we mm -hmm. don't have like a um, like a local kind of pizza. You know, there's like New York pizza from guys who grew up in New York. There's Chicago pizza. I mean, you yeah, can get any kind. Yeah. There's Detroit pizza, pizza, which is like a big Detroit, thing. Detroit, yeah. Now What's I've seen Detroit that. Detroit pizza. It's it almost looks like a Sicilian slice. Huh? It's square and it's big. Yeah, it's square. I saw well, that. Um, is it? Somebody yeah, I just like having. I just like going sausage on my pizza. I just like. I, I like. I like New York style. You know, thin crust. Thin crust. Yep. And then they say New York, the way the water is, that you can't get pizza that's not going to taste anywhere as good because of the 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 way the water. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. But New York I like is just that, very uh, the defensive dough. of their pizza. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that too, but that seems no. weird. It's still good. Chicago is crap, man. I mean, it's terrible. Can't you buy and like I, Evian? Do you get, like the Chicago style? I like Chicago it's all style. deep dish. And it just yeah. it feels sick after you eat it. It's oh, disgusting. I, love that. Yeah. I prefer the thin as well. Same thing with Chicago hot dogs. Because I had uh, the Cubs in the World Series a few years ago. I was dating this girl from Chicago. And she was like, she wanted to make like a whole Wrigley Field kind of thing. So she yeah. made Chicago hot dogs. They were Chicago dogs. 
They, we, you like them? I love them. They're just yeah. Chicago dogs. dogs. The yeah, beef. they were just like, she put so much stuff on there. It's like, you have tomatoes yeah. on your hot dogs? Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the pepperoncinis. The pepperoncinis. We just so have shit on a hot dog. Oh, it's the great. Relish. I like them. I really like them. They're good. I wanted a hot dog, not a whole meal. No, you get a Chicago whole meal. dogs are good. Chicago I dogs like are awesome. Lot. Remember, we went and had some, some dogs. When was that? When we went to did that radio show. Yeah. yeah, that's the first we time y'all ever went to Portillo's. Yep, we got to go back. You have to have a good Chicago dog though, because I've had some kind of bunk ones. Yeah, it even has the celery salt on it. Everything yeah. I think everything works. I really enjoy it. You know, I just like I'm simple. I'll just just throw some mustard on it. <laughs> no, well, ke- no ketchup. That's the big. You remember thing. Steve no, Martin's old bit about um, eating hot dogs to so people? Who's- oh, you know Steve Martin. Say, yo, you don't want hot dogs. They have really weird things in them. And he goes, it doesn't bother me because I, I really enjoy rat turds. <laughs> <laughs> or some shit like that. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, bowling for Soup. You know the band? I've heard of them, yeah. Okay. Are they bowling to earn soup? Or are they bowling like on soup's behalf? I think they're, they, 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 they bowl for a can of soup. That's what they, they you know, like, or do if they you, throw bowling if you get a strike? You get a free bowl of soup if you get a strike, right? So they stack the soup cans like pins and then bowl. It's the name of a band, bro. Yeah, but what are they going for? <laughs> They're going for like the winner gets a good soup, beauty, like shit that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I don't know. Bowling for soup? Yeah, well, you see, you're talking about them. Are they we still around? Music? I don't know. I think so. It's just Molly. I just haven't heard of them. Like, I've never heard of them. Queued up to play for us right now. Bowling for soup? No. Okay. Um, hey, you might want to check in that uh, short list again. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about stuff, you should be getting it ready, yep. Rick. I just apologize. In case. You know, we're <laughs> Molly up to speed, but um, you know, sometimes she's just yeah. I'm sorry. There you Apology go. accepted. And where's the sir? I like when you sir. <laughs> she does that once in a while. It makes me very happy. Listen, we love you know I'm pissed if I don't know you sir. where we That's would be they... without Molly. We wouldn't have a show and we're constantly threatening to fire her. Might yeah. be single My and sir... dead in a gutter somewhere. <laughs> My sir is normally sarcastic. It's normally when I'm oh, upset. I, I don't care. I, oh, it's like know. faking an oh, orgasm. When... I don't give a shit. Oh, when I just wear like the leather outfit. <laughs> just keep doing it. <laughs> he, he doesn't care if it's sarcastic just call him sir yeah, yeah. even when you have real <laughs> orgasms i think you're being sarcastic <laughs> <laughs> we're back off the rails come on let's get back on yeah. track <laughs> okay aliens invade what's the first thing you're doing i'm hiding <laughs> um turn it on tv to watch them i mean <laughs> yeah, just I'm not where... gonna get involved and fight the aliens if that's what you're asking. <laughs> no, dude, I didn't say join the military. You think they're gonna be friendly or, <coughs> yeah. or not? I don't know. I'd probably Listen, be like I think they will at least try to be friendly, right? I'm gonna tell you what I would do. Okay. Aliens invade, I would secure the goddamn border <laughs> of Earth. Yep. Shut oh, the borders. I'm talking about the southern border. I'm oh. sorry. No politics, no politics. William. Yep. No politics, no religion, and no Brett Favre. Those are the three. Rules. I guess if aliens invaded, I would be like, I have five birds. Do you see how good I treat them? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I could be your pet. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe we could put them in a cage <laughs> and teach them how to talk. <laughs> no, they got here, dude. They're they're gonna mess you us think? up. They're gonna mess us up. Listen, uh, I and yeah. and you know what? We deserve it. Look at look at what well, we. What do we do to them? Hold on, before you throw them? it. We as me in there. What well, I do. Maybe they we invaded want, their space with our, our spaceships. They want whatever <laughs> resources we, we have. Captain have. Kirk up there. Maybe that pissed them off. I was going to say that was the last straw. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> the first coupe in space. It was okay until you sent this guy up there. <laughs> no. Oh, man. I love Captain Kirk, man. Me too. You like him? Yes. That's why I... Uh... Picard was Did always my favorite. Picard was my favorite as well. As no. much as I like Kirk, Picard was more of a captain. One hundred percent. Picard was more of a captain, but the original Star Trek, which is it was so cheesy that I, I like Captain Kirk. 
just for how cheesy that show was. Have you seen the new ones with Archer? No. They're actually really From good. From Enterprise? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite captain. Scott Bakula. Or as my mom would call him, Scott Baluka. Scott Baluka. <laughs> he was the greatest it's captain. Bakula, mom. <laughs> All right. What's the highest you ever counted to? Um, <laughs> Counted, like, consecutively? Yeah. Who can my remember? ones? My sister used to get stuff. She worked at home before it was a thing. But for this company, she had to before count. Before it was a thing. <laughs> before it was a thing. Count has always been a thing. No, 20 he, years he ago. He was saying his sister worked from home before it was a thing. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant she had to count like a thousand of these. It'd be like a stupid picture that goes on a car, like on the door or something, and she would have to count a thousand of them out. Manually? They didn't have a machine that would count <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah. She was like a parts counter. That's huh. weird. They would mail suitcases of stuff, and she would have to count and make sure they were the I'll right be number. honest after a certain amount i just get bored with it yeah it's the, i think everybody does sit there and count i've probably counted to a thousand really? bet you. i'm pretty sure i haven't me either what the hell i, I might have gotten you know a couple hundred maybe even 300 when i was a kid what do you have 300 of <laughs> well no you just sat there and counted out loud Toy 300. Soldiers, 300. i mean you count things when you're bored or you play hide and seek or, or you maybe you're counting pennies. Pennies. I mean, 300 pennies yeah. is only three dollars you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay are pajama pants acceptable outside the home no are what pants pajama um acceptable by you i mean i don't care what people would do if you yep. want to wear pajama pants, you can wear pajama pants. Like in the airport, like getting on the plane, wearing pajamas. I don't pajamas. care what other people do. I'm I not going to do that. it. A whole family, they were all wearing pajamas. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to wear my pajamas outside the house. But I wear pajamas on, on a podcast of Off the Rails. See, I'm wearing them right now. There you go. Acceptable. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you're at home. But my pajamas are just a t-shirt and my underwear. Mine are just my underwear. I was just going to say, I appreciate that you're wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got to ever since this. The hard part is about that long of a long time. <laughs> it'll go away, or they'll have to drain it. <laughs> That's your... <laughs> so I just found that earlier. He was like, I forgot I put this some bit on oh, there. That was when I had an abscess in my penis. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Tom took a sound clip of it. I think it's a side effect from the COVID or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a, <laughs> it's a callus because you only go with the one hand. <laughs> you got to burn the other side down too. <laughs> or spin your wrist this way for a while. If you you got to switch hands sometimes. You're leaning. Yeah, well. <laughs> now, I'm a left basic Look science. I'm a lefty. I'm a southpaw. And the speed bump was on the right side, wasn't it? No, it was on the left side. Oh, you, you got to take your rings number. off. If you can. I don't wear jewelry. I'm a man. I don't wear jewelry. You little bracelets and shit. I don't wear jewelry. You asked me to buy you a bracelet. I didn't ask you. You just got me one. You, Molly, he asked me to buy you him did. this special really? magnet bracelet. He said, where'd oh, you get right, it? Can you right. get me one? You're right. I got you one, and the son of a bitch I never wears it. Oh, it's it's got the um the thing in it. For yeah, you. it'll like fix your blood or something. Or something. <laughs> it'll well, help with the penis abscess. <laughs> <laughs> prevent that. It's plus you one know, armor. The embarrassing thing is it that you got to pull it out, and they have to feel it. It's weird. Somebody I never met feeling my penis when it's not in the best condition either. Well, it was kind of <laughs> lumpy. <laughs> And it was swollen. That's why I had to go to them. No, it's like it's like way it to go, Tom. Weirdest... Now we're getting way TMI again. No, it's the weirdest thing. It's just like I went to pee and I was like, this feels kind of full, kind of bigger. <laughs> it was swollen, and for some for no apparent reason. And then and then it got worse. So I was like, I gotta go see a doctor about this shit. Was that your first erection? It wasn't an <laughs> erection. It was a it was an infection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back on track. It's we're bigger. Off the we're off the rails again. It was. It was thick. It was full. It was like, damn. Why it's, it's suddenly it's bigger? Like, very happy. And then it's like, what? This isn't right. Something's wrong here. 
You- I hadn't been using it really just to pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's useless. All right, Molly, bring us back, please. All right. How strict were your parents and did they ever give you weird punishments? In hindsight, they're pretty strict. I mean, because when I look at my stuff my friends did, I thought everybody was kind of the same, you know? I mean, well, you got a military dad, of course they were strict. Oh, yeah. yeah, but he was in the Air Force, so he wasn't that military. No, that's true. I was in the yeah. Air I was rough on I my mean, head. he's very laid back. My mom was way more strict than my dad was. But, uh, see, at the time, I didn't think they were strict. I just thought those were just the way it was, you know? Like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. It's, I thought everybody had, like, the same rules, you know? That sounds like great parenting, that you just had an understanding. Like, Right. Kids need discipline. That's how my childhood pretty much was. Well, yeah. of course, you're well, German. Germans. Yeah. Germans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> respected my parents. Of course. Yeah. Right? I mean, I was I was the middle kid. I was the youngest for like 10 years. And then my younger sister came along. And after that, they kind of just ignored me. And I just oh. hang, out of, hung out of my room. You got the yeah, middle it was awesome. syndrome. You were the baby for 10 years. Yes. And then you get the middle child syndrome. Yes, but I was the middle child when I became like an adult. You know, when I was almost like through my preteen and teen years, you know. Yeah. And then you, you don't want to hang out with your parents anymore. That's you when they were kind of ignoring me. Horrible little sister, though, getting all the attention. I was cool with that when I was like thirteen, you know. Okay. Oh, well, I suppose. Yeah, that's when you're trying to sneak away. And yeah. is is it a brother or a sister older? I have two sisters. So you're a boy in the middle. Okay. Yeah. My uh, uh, my older sister, she always got like straight A's, and so I had to like follow her footsteps. You know, with the same oh, teachers. No. And then well, my younger well, sister, she was uh, um hardcore into gymnastics she was on the junior olympic gymnastic team oh wow so when she was like six they were like going to gymnastic meets and i would just i mean i was like 16 and i'd be like okay then my parents are gone every weekend you know just throwing parties while they're out it wasn't i was i wasn't that type of kid and i was just like yay i could stay up late and watch movies i (laughs) I didn't know i had i didn't know i had options you know that now if I had to go back and do it, I'd be out of control. But I don't know. I don't know any of that stuff. I was never exposed to it, you know. Yeah. I mean, all my friends were like nerdy friends. Me too. I was the yeah. same. I was a good kid. Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> I uh, guess I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. I never as far as weird punishments, I mean, I, got, I was on restriction all the time. You know, for stupid. Usually talking back. That's what they called it out there on restriction. Not yeah, founded. I wasn't allowed like to go out and do stuff. That's military. You say you're on restriction. Yeah. Yeah. No, Not- but it wasn't military. I was like, you know, my mom's the one who said, like, okay, you know, what's restrictions? Unre- Normally, people say you're grounded, not you're on restriction. Grounded, yeah, that's what they're saying. The same thing. I've never. I that. had work to do when I got in trouble. Like one time, I got suspended from school, and they went and had a truckload of dirt put into the yard. And then I had to get a wheelbarrow the three days I was suspended. Did you have to like grain by grain? No, but I had to <laughs> shovel and I had to build up this area that we had stepping stones going to the back. And I mean, like, anytime I got in trouble, it was just a lot of work. <laughs> like, sure. well, I couldn't wait to get to school to get the hell away from that. So it's like. They accomplished their goal. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it yeah. was all. I, I wasn't on restriction where I could just lay around <laughs> and watch TV <laughs> like you. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> I'm restricted to being relaxed. I had blisters on my hand when yeah, I was I'm like, oh, my- I'm being punished. Or and I wouldn't get fed sometimes. You you're not have, getting any dinner. It's like Jesus. And go work. Go pull the flower beds, the weeds. Like what the heck? Damn, Will. Yeah, it was rough. I'm gonna hug you after this show. I was we can cry. <laughs> So people said, like, hey, did you have this poster on your, like, I saw that on Facebook. Did you have this poster on your room wall? You know, I was like, room? What room? I stayed on a couch in the den. <laughs> room. Oh, you didn't even have a room under no, the stairs? No, Even Not Harry even Potter had a room. No, I didn't even have a room. <laughs> even Harry Potter a, had a door, I man. You didn't have a door. A couch in the den with the dogs. <laughs> That's the good thing about being the only boy. I always had my own room. Like, you know, my sisters had to share. Oh, that's the team. So you get out of that. All right. Anyone's doing anything for Halloween? It's on a Sunday. Go to 
the Avalon Theater in Milwaukee, yeah. Twisted Dreams, will be premiering I Dream of a Psychopomp. It's going to be a great night. Doors we're, open at 730. We're or, doing a costume contest. Costume. Dr. Destruction is going to be hosting. There's going to be prizes. Dr. Destruction. That's yep. great. He's going to be hosting. Are you guys wearing a contest? Uh, oh, yeah. We will we're be. Gonna be yes. I don't have anything. So you show up in your costumes. There's going to be a costume contest and lots of other fun stuff. And then a movie premiere. Yep. Nice. What so time? You spend your Halloween. 730 at the Avalon. 730 it's gonna be great. this Sunday. So and No, not this Sunday. Halloween, right? Yes. That's it's a Sunday. real cool Halloween. historic theater, theater. In, in Milwaukee. Yeah, it's on. Um, and I have no clue if this is true, but it's haunted. There you go. In KK. Okay. <laughs> well, it's sure going it to be haunted <laughs> yeah. that day. It'll be haunted that day. All right. Also, wait. What is what is uh, Molly going to wear? It don't mind. Don't worry about it. Wear? Hey, uh, can we all do a costume like the yeah. three of us? Yeah, right, we talked we'll about talk that about last this. week. Yeah, and yeah, we never we never, <laughs> never came to a decision. But what, okay. I'm not going to be the horse's butt. If I'm you don't gonna... mind being the beast, you're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm the beast every day. <laughs> no, I wanted to go as Gaston and her as Belle, and we kind of need a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Because to Tom Gaston, Gaston is the hero. He is the hero <laughs> of that movie. Do you believe? Do you think Gaston was the hero of Beauty and the Beast? Um, I'm trying to think. So oh, the Beast got turned into yeah. The after, beast. If there had to be a hero, yeah. The Beast got turned into the Beast because he was an asshole. Yeah. Yes. He was rude to the. He yeah, stole. the Beast definitely can't be the hero, but he, he repented. Stole. I mean, he kind of learned his lesson they after made being the, beast. the hero, though. Or the, I mean, they made him the villain. Yeah, but Gaston was just knew that there's a monster up the road taking people, yeah. and there's all kinds of poltergeist and shit. So I'm gonna go handle this for he the had town. Ulterior like motives. a hero. What was his ulterior motive? Giving Belle a wonderful life. He was full of himself and assumed that she Everyone would love him because him. he was amazing. Right, he was. Right. And she well, had no interest in him at all. So what? <laughs> She'd be lucky to have Gaston. She wanted someone that was sweet and sensitive. So she went with a guy that was such a dick. A <laughs> witch had to come out of the woods and turn him into a monster. That's <laughs> really. She Gaston wanted a sweet was just guy? trying to save. Her. Did the witch turn Gaston into a beast? No, he must have been she nicer should've... than this asshole who now no, has because he was originally a beast who was turned into Gaston. No, <laughs> I'd love to be turned into Gaston. <laughs> Well, Anywho, Gaston had the nuts to go fight this fucking monster. Okay. Anyone else have the balls to do that? Are we gonna have to fight if I'm the beast? He didn't go by himself. He brought the entire village with him. He's not an idiot. He incited a mob. <laughs> Some monster with all this poltergeist shit. Angry villagers. Gaston's. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a long, long time. So, hey, what are you gonna wear as Gaston? <laughs> I'm gonna get the red jacket. And I'm He's gonna, gonna have, have a ponytail. Have a nice ponytail. <laughs> In the tight pants and the boots. <laughs> and Molly, what are you wearing? It's Belle. Well, Belle, it would be the blue dress with the white apron. Yeah. From the beginning where she's reading a book and ignoring the fuck out of Gaston the whole time. <laughs> Devil in a blue dress. Devil in yeah. a blue dress. Yeah, blue Lumiere. Dress. <laughs> so I for said William should be Cogsworth if we're doing a yeah, that the would beast work. theme. You can be one of the poltergeists. Oh, what do they wear? <laughs> They're like the plates and the whole house is fucked. <laughs> Cogsworth is the clock. He's a grandfather clock. Oh, the clock. Yeah, yeah it's just a big-ass haunted house. It could be anything you want, man. All right. Anyway. For those of you that missed Off the Rails Comedy Night, first off, fuck you. Second off, <laughs> we're doing it again. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. December 11th. December 11th. Uh, for the big brothers and big sisters of Ozaki County. And I want to give yep. a shout out to the company Event Boost. Brandy, she's a company that helps nonprofits raise money. And they just take care of everything from conception to cleanup, yeah. which sounds a lot dirtier. She actually wrote that, but. <laughs> <laughs> you... Rick, do you know Brandy? Maybe. You know Brandy, Rick? She's in California. Yeah. You know her? You got to know her. Brandy. It's not that it's, there's not that many people in California. Yeah, don't worry. Well, I know it. some. I, I know some people named Brandy. I doubt it's the same one though. Probably I not. bet she's a fine girl. <laughs> <laughs> <A> good <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. 
And I believe Mequon Pizza Company is going to be donating pizza again. I hope. Oh, so. nice! That was delicious that pizza, was, man. Yeah. It really was great. It was really Seriously, good, good, good food. pizza. And it'll be hosted by um, our mm -hmm. own Mike Coven. Yeah. Yep. I'll be selling drinks again. And uh, Dana Ehrman will also be performing, as oh. well as myself. And our headliner is Christopher Barnes. Yeah. Yes. So it's um, gonna be a good show. It's gonna be a great show. It's gonna be great. So get your tickets. Hell yeah! All right. Rick Jean, you wrote a move an award-winning movie. I did. Tell us a little bit about your movie. That I didn't I didn't pay to watch it. Wait, what do you have to pay to see <laughs> it? Can you send us a freebie? I thought that was happening. Well, I can send you a freebie. It's, I actually have it on I actually put it on there YouTube. Goes the neighborhood. Oh, it's yeah. on YouTube. It's yeah, on YouTube. That's a, um go ahead. What? No, go ahead and say it. Oh What's the name well, of yeah, it? it started out as uh, um I was going to the whole thing started during the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, it started as, a, as just a sketch. There's going to be a reoccurring sketch I was going to do, which okay. was uh, um, it's going to be the, the whole basic plot is that a quiet neighborhood prepares for the end of the world after a conspiracy theorist doomsday prepper moves in. Right. <laughs> okay. You know, the guy was going to come in. He has all these wacky theories and he starts convincing the neighbors, well, you know, little by little, you know. That the world's ending, <laughs> right? And uh, um, and so when I first started, I didn't have any animation skills because it's all animated, and yeah. it's sixty-five minutes, so it's kind of long. But uh, um, what we did was I had a friend. This one says thirty-nine did, minutes. Do what? This one says thirty-nine minutes that you're selling. Oh, that's a short one. I had to do for film festivals. I had to do. I wanted to enter it in short as a short film, and it had to be under forty minutes. So there's yeah. the edited version that took out 30 or 25 minutes or so. Yeah, and that's tough being a short film. They like them down to about eight minutes. Well, that's actually really short film. Like a short short is what those considered. Yeah. Uh, um, the ones I entered were under 40 is what the okay. I, I get it for. We get uh, which is why it's 39. Yeah. You know? uh, um, but yeah, but that's the edited version I took out. But I wrote it as like, a, um, it's going to be a series. And each okay. it's going to be a series of a bunch of episodes with each episode running well, almost 10 minutes, like eight to 10 minutes. Right. And mm -hmm. I was putting it together that way. And I started animating it just on my computer, you know, learning how to do that. And it started out, I sucked at it, but then I got better and better and better because I had a year to do nothing else. Right. And, then, uh, um, and that's all I did. I was doing it for like, you know, 12, 14 hours a day. And then, uh, um, and then the, 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 um, I started going like, hey, this is long enough I could turn into a movie as opposed to like a series, you know, mm -hmm. but I didn't have an ending. And so the way I ended it is I, I think it's bizarre, like almost uh, um, it, it basically makes it where it can never be a mainstream success, but it might have a cult following the way I ended it. And the way I ended it was I took all the old uh, sitcoms that I liked growing up. And I made it where, uh, um, oh, wait, yeah, there's my website. Yep. There goes the neighborhood. You can uh, um, Buck 99 or buy Yeah, it. I, I can fix that because it's it's free online now. At first, oh, I was going to put it for free. free. Just, Anyways, just, uh, um, I, I made the ending where it has all the all these things that killed old sitcoms, right? Like I had the characters aware that they're in a movie. And they go like, hey, lo viewers are losing interest. We need to spice things up. So they had their cousin Oliver come live with them for a bit. Okay. And then I had one of the characters jump a shark. Jump, jump a shark. Then, uh, um, I had the great, I had like a little green alien called the great wazoo where, you know, <laughs> he showed up. You know, I just had all these things and they're all kind of just thrown together. But they're thrown together in a way that makes sense. Like as, as far as the plot, you know. Uh, hmm. um, like the conspiracy theorist guy was talking about the zombie aliens the whole time. So when a zombie, you know, when the alien appears, it's not that out of the ordinary. Yeah. But I only did it because I was like, how the hell am I going to end this thing? <laughs> and then so, I did the end credit, you know, scene where they're all talk, all the characters were talking, right? And the one character is a conspiracy theorist and he talks just like a wacky, you know, like you'd expect a conspiracy theorist guy to, to talk. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he talks with a very heavy English accent and he reveals that he's a trained Shakespearean actor and... You know, he hates doing movies like this. Only did it for the money. I don't know. It's basically they, they kept breaking the wall. You know, the the fourth wall. And but yeah, 
Yeah, it was fun. a lot of fun. And then I I entered it first and first I entered it as a um, as an animation, which was dumb because I saw some of the animations I was up against, and they may not be as funny because my thing's pretty funny, like in a very <laughs> silly kind of way. But it's a uh, um, it's not very it, the animation sucks. I admit it. I'm not a professional animator. It's very you know South Parky, you know. Mm -hmm. It's uh, um. But I was going up in these animation categories against guys who professional animators, right? Right. And I was just like, okay. Yeah. But then I did it as a comedy, and I, I started having more success. Yeah, you he's know, all, it as a comedy as opposed to animation. He's going up against Philo Barnhart, uh, who animated Beauty and the Beast, and Drew Gaston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's so much. I I saw the people I was up against going like, are you are you kidding me? I can't beat these guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, on animation, you know? Yeah, but just yeah. having it entered and having other people watch what you've created. Well, you can enter as many. Getting accepted is hard enough. And then winning. Yeah. The fact that you sat and just took the pandemic and self-taught yourself how to animate. And animate and <laughs> I don't know. Here's the, here's the trophies I got. Look how big this thing is. Hey! It's pretty heavy, too. So yeah, instead of starting a podcast during the pandemic, you made a movie. <laughs> yeah. But what I would do is I would write all the lines and I'll send them to my friends and I'll be, you know, give them their parts and say, Hey, record your lines and mail them back to me. That's awesome. You know, so we, we all did it. I mean, we were, we weren't even in the same state, you know, and yeah. we were recording all our lines and stuff. It was Rick Jean in the living room with the movie trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I live in California, so everything's expensive. I just have my living room is my bedroom. Hey, it sounds like Will is a kid, man. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, true. I don't have a bed. The living room, the den. <laughs> yeah, no, I just have a studio. Awesome. Tell us it a little really bit. It really looks about... good from here, yeah, though, nice. man. It really looks nice. Tell us yeah. a little bit about keeping it weird. Your sketch comedy and radio. Okay. Um, it started well. First, it started in like 2005. On a big station in San Diego, which was it was on a 103.7, and uh, um, and it was just a weekly show, and I would just take news, like things in the news, and we would act them out. Like I would always embellish things, like maybe just take the headline and say that's kind of funny, and just write a skit about it. And I suck at voices, like I'm horrible at it. But okay. I think one of my strengths is that I know I suck at it, so I usually just play the narrator. But oh, I have friends go. who are really good at voices. So they would do like all these accents and all that, you know. Yeah. And for the longest time, it was just two of us. And they would have guests come in, you know, and we do an hour worth of skits once a week. And that station changed formats uh, um, like in 2007. So we're on for a couple of years. And so when they changed formats, we were no longer on. Mm -hmm. And then by a couple of years later, I pitched it to another station and brought the show back. And the first one was a corporate one. It was owned by CBS. It was a CBS affiliated station. And there were a lot more rules. That, uh, um, like they didn't like me doing commercial parodies. Because okay. they, um, they thought like, you know, with the sponsors and whatever. Okay. Uh, um, but the, the other one, when we got, it was a much smaller station. But it was independently owned. And that guy did not care what we did. As long as you didn't break the FCC rules, you know. Mm -hmm. So oh, I wow. did a ton of commercial parodies. Which I thought <laughs> was kind of important to the show, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just surround myself with people who are good at voices. Yeah. Because I can't, I, I don't do voices. No, that's really smart. If you know, knowing your weakness is half the battle of success. Yeah. But, I, but I'm a really excellent writer. So I would write like everything. I'm really good at other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I am good at other stuff. That's, that's how I earn my keep, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got passed. You said the first time you performed yes. at the comedy store. By Not Mitzi. the first time I performed at the comedy store. The first time I performed for Mitzi, in front of Mitzi. So you got passed right away. Not right away. Well, see, first time in front of her. Yeah, the first time in front of her. See, there's two comedy stores. There's La Jolla, which is San Diego. Uh, it's a suburb of San Diego, but there's one, the same local one, and there's one, there's a big one in Hollywood. Okay, I was performing in La Jolla uh, for about two years. But no, I mean, I was just performing there. I was performing there like three times a week. So I had some success like there locally, but nobody in LA knew about me or cared. But I had, a, I was on, I was on like the showcase list, right? 
And I would go to LA every Monday because that's when they did the showcases. And I go up there and showcase. And every time I go up there, it'll be Mitzi's not coming in. And I'd be like, okay, I'll do like a three minute set and go home. And I did that for like eight Mondays in a row before she finally saw me. And wow. then she passed me. Yeah. That's awesome. But I think, but I think I got passed more on my persistence. You know, somebody says, like, this guy's from La Jolla. He's been coming up for, you know, every Monday, you know. I Just don't think be- so. I don't, because there was a lot of good comics that didn't get passed by her that were going there for a long time before she finally passed them. I think that's quite an accomplishment, man. Yeah, and what really made me, like, big in La Jolla, because I was the only one down in San Diego who was passed. So, you know, I was performing... You know, I was performing two or three times a week there, and I'm performing, and you know, also getting weekend spots. I was performing a lot back then. You know, great. And at what the time, that used to be the only club in town. And that what was like six now? clubs in San Diego. Do you have huh? how many you have now that you can perform in around San how many Diego? What? Clubs. How many? There's like six clubs in San Diego. Wow. Are you performing all of them? I well, one of them just opened. There's a new Laugh Factory. Uh, yeah. um, that that's only been open for a couple months, maybe not even that. And there's one called the ACC, which I haven't performed at. But that's because there's there's people I don't like who will run it, so I haven't even been there. Uh, um, but the other four I perform at. Okay, that's a lot of clubs, man. It's a yeah, it's a ton. When, when there was one, I thought like, man, they should open up another one here. But then all of a sudden they started popping up, you know. But the trouble, though, is they run them like L.A. clubs. All the shows are like showcases. You know, like like most clubs have an open or feature headliner. Right, right. These clubs are just, they're just showcase shows. It would just be a bunch of comics doing eight to ten minutes, you know? Hmm. Uh, um, which is cool, but you, you can't make your living doing that. There's, then there's too many comedians. Like, as far as you can't make money doing comedy locally, you know? Yeah, you got to go on the road. Yeah, and the trouble with San Diego on the road is everywhere so far. Yeah. Because L.A. is not good for road, you know. Uh, I'm the closest town's Phoenix, and that's like eight hours. Oh, wow. I mean, the closest one with road clubs, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're we're about 75, 80 miles away from Chicago, and there's quite a few clubs there. And, like, yeah. the scene in Milwaukee, you know, they've just opened an improv here. It's brand new, but... And really? there's another club. Yeah, it just opened. So and there's another club here, but it's like, you know, and then a lot, of, a number of mics, but it's like, I kind of feel like I've kind of, I don't know, it's gotten, for me, it's gotten kind of stale. I want to, but I, I have a day job. I want to go down to Chicago. I want to perform down there more. There's a lot more opportunities, um, a lot more places to perform. So for the next year, I'm going to work on trying to get down to Chicago more. I think I'm going to talk Weed's to Vikram legal. and see if he could help me get into a few rooms down there. Well, Vikram lives in Chicago? Yeah, Vikram lives in Chicago. Oh, I love I Vikram. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about moving probably somewhere to the Midwest just to work the road, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, Chicago, you should consider that. I think Minneapolis has got a good scene as well. Yeah, I know people there. I was thinking more... Uh, just, I was thinking, probably more like Ohio. Ish. Like, I mean, just because there's so many places I could go from there, you know. Yeah, you can yeah. go to Indianapolis. You can go to Wisconsin, Chicago. Michigan. Yeah, you're kind of centrally driving. located. Just you go to that, that's the whole reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just when we go somewhere where so I don't care so much about the right locals. Than us. Do you yeah. have a room there yourself that you do um, in San Diego at all? You know, I have like, rooms that perform it pretty regularly, but not, I don't run a room. Uh, Kimball's runs one. Have you done her room? Oh, yeah, you know Kimball's? Yeah. That's right. You know Kimball's, yeah. Yeah, Kimball's runs, she's had her on the show. A sweetheart. Yeah, yeah Kimball's runs a few rooms. We missed her in Vegas. She was there. Oh, you did, yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's pretty new. She's only been in a comedy for a couple of years. But she's great at finding rooms because she yeah. finds some great rooms. Yeah, she will. All right, Rick. Well, Thank you very much for coming on. Where can we find you coming up besides uh, your website here? Where can you find me when you guys are in Wisconsin? Or where can we find you? Are you going on the road? Are you going anywhere? Not on the road. I'm going to L.A. tomorrow or tonight, actually. Um, And then I have shows. I usually do shows on every, like every Saturday somewhere. But it's all like out here, you know. I don't have anywhere, um, you know, 
check out rickgene.com. Uh, give him a couple bucks for his yeah, movie. Don't. Yeah, man, it's a couple bucks. It's a couple bucks. It won an award. Who cares? You tip your bartender. Well, let me <laughs> ask you something. Would his thing, would his uh, movie be able to be entered in, in your festival? Would yeah, but more? it's highly... Thirty. It's yeah, I don't think stuff. we're putting a 39-minute <laughs> short in. Do you have a shorter version of it? <laughs> do you have a seven-minute version? Actually, I do, which would be the first episode. Because you got to remember, I did everything initially as episodes. See, we the way we work ours, our ideal time for a short, we try to tell people is like eight minutes. That way we can take our 90-minute block and load oh, it Oh, yeah, up. yeah. That's all you have, sure. Because we sell 90-minute blocks as movie passes. If you're eating up 40% of it, it's like, well, this better be a good-ass movie. They no, are no, I, yeah. For no, a lot of uh, and there are yeah. film festivals that are like that. Yeah, our yeah, okay. we we produce we co-produce the Twisted Dreams Film Festival in Wisconsin. Yeah, in Wisconsin's Milwaukee. largest horror That's film cool. festival, but it's genre. We do comedies, am, animated. Yeah, animated. You're getting, you're catching. I, I'm sorry, animated. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. If you got that seven minute, maybe you should enter that because uh, look. This is two of the producers here. You might, <laughs> might have a good shot. Yeah, we might be Don't able to say we're going to give him special treatment. <laughs> Why the hell not? No, no, no. Both of series of comedy. Come on, over. man. He's a friend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Check out Rick Jean. Check out rickjean.com. Thank you very much for coming on, Rick. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And remember, you're not, we're not you're good, not good enough. enough.